Welcome back to this Q&A episode of Home Built Workshop. Today, we're gonna talk about woodworking tools for building electric guitars. Well, for this Q&A video, I'm not just gonna be standing here and talking about things. We're gonna actually build a guitar body and I'm gonna take you through the process. This is just gonna be an overview of tools that I personally use. If you or somebody else uses something different, a different method, that doesn't mean that anybody is wrong or right. This is just the way I do it. So let's get it done. I'm gonna start out using my table saw to square up my pieces and get them cut to the rough length. Then I'll run them through my thickness planer to get them down to the thickness that I need. In this case, it's an inch and three quarters. This is a very common thickness for a lot of solid body guitars. Then I'll take those pieces and run them on the jointer to get the edges nice and square. You'll notice here that I'm running both pieces together. They're arranged in a book matched fashion and this makes up for any variation in the fence angle. Now we'll just glue it up using some regular wood glue. I prefer to use Type Bond 2, but that doesn't mean that that's what you have to use. Now you can use about any kind of clamp that you have for this glue up but I like to start out with a set of parallel clamps to help keep everything square. I kind of break down building a guitar into three stages. So this completes the first one and that's preparing the blank. At this point, I've only used the table saw. I've used the jointer, glue, and clamps. And our blank's ready to move on to the next step. You could use a hand saw to cut your pieces to length and you could also use a hand plane to join your edges and get them nice and square and that would basically eliminate all power tools from preparing the blank. You still need some glue and clamps but power tools can be eliminated by hand tools. So now I'm cutting out my body shape on the bandsaw. I've traced out the outline from a template that I already have prepared. Now I don't have a great recommendation to replace the bandsaw with a hand tool. The only thing I can think of is a coping saw and it would take a long time, but it would work. Now with your already prepared template, you can attach it to your body blank using some good double-sided tape. And using a table mounted router and a template bit, you can route the shape exactly. When you're buying a template bit, you definitely get what you pay for, so try to buy the best one that you can afford. This one I'm using is from Radian Tools, and it works great. And throughout this process, you're gonna fall back on the shop vac a lot, because this makes a lot of dust. So for me, from here on out, the trim router and my drill press are my two best friends. I use the trim router a lot for routing control cavities, neck pockets, pickup cavities, roundovers, chamfers, any other profile that I need to put on the body is done with my trim router. Whatever trim router you have is pretty much going to work great for this process. Remember that shop vac I mentioned? Yeah. And now using the drill press, we'll drill all the pilot holes for the neck and the pickup, stuff like that. At some point during this routing process, I like to pass the bodies through the drum sander and that gets them nice and flat. And this is also one of the main reasons that I made the decision to buy a drum sander was so that I can flatten guitar bodies really easy. Is it necessary? Absolutely not, but it sure is nice. So now at the end of this second portion, we should have all of the machine work done on the body. All that's left now is the final handwork. Now we've really only used the trim router with a few router bits and a good set of brad point drill bits on the drill press. And that's really it for this section. So let's move on now and get the rest of the shaping done on the bodies. 
Now this section is going to be the least complicated, but you're most likely going to spend the majority of your time right here, using files, rasps, and a ton of sanding. This is where you're going to add any arm contours or other carving that you want to incorporate. Now you're going to be able to do a lot of your work using a few rasps and files and a lot of sandpaper. That's really all that's going to be required for this portion. Now I really do like this Shinto rasp. I think I've mentioned it a few times before, maybe some of the other videos. This thing works really good. This is not sponsored or anything, but I do recommend picking up one of these. They're pretty inexpensive. I'll put a link down below in the description if you're interested. So what do you guys think? These bodies are ready to go. All that's left now is the finishing. Maybe I should say that there's kind of four steps to this and add finishing as one of the steps, but this video is not intended to cover finishing. There's so many options for finishes that you can do with a guitar body. I'm not even gonna go there, not for this video. We'll save that for another one. So I hope this video helps answer some of you guys' questions as far as what woodworking tools I use to make a guitar body. As you can see, really there's not all that much. There's a lot of steps with some of them, but there's not really a lot of tools required. Remember, if you don't have a power tool, a lot of chances you can replace them with a hand tool and get still the same results. I mean, you can use like a bit and a brace to drill all the holes. You don't need a power drill. I suppose you could even use that with a bit and a chisel to make things like your pickup cavities and control cavities. Of course it would take a lot more work, but you could definitely do it and you don't have to have a bunch of fancy tools to do so. Even things like the roundover, you could do that with a rasp and some sandpaper and get 100% acceptable results without using a router. So it's not necessary to have tons and tons of tools. Of course if you have them on hand it makes it a lot easier, but it's not necessary. So don't feel like if you don't have something, you're stuck. You're not stuck. There's a ton of ways around things and you can get it done. So like always down below, you'll find links to my social media, my website, and also some affiliate links to some of the products that I use and recommend. So those affiliate links are very helpful if you're interested in making your purchases through those affiliate links. It doesn't cost you anything more, but does help out the shop and I definitely do appreciate that. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon so you get notifications when I post a new video. Until next time, thanks a lot for watching.